now, this instruction text or explanation of Mahamudra is called the four statements or words of Mahamudra and is presented in four sections. The first of that being to find out everything about the mind, to clarify the, all the whereabouts and of mind and what it actually is. The second <coughs> step after the clarification is how to rest mind. And the skillful methods are taught by means of six examples. <coughs> The first method shown is the Garuda, soaring in free space. So the example of the Garuda taking off into space is that the Garuda is in this moment without any moment of doubt and hesitation as to whether he is able to fly or fall down. <coughs> so the analogy shows that entering the process of meditation of Mahamudra you should be free of any hesitation and doubt whether this exercise will become particularly good or that we can do it in any way wrong. Free of this hesitation, we just embark into the process of familiarizing ourselves with Mahamudra. <laughs> The next method is taught by means of the analogy of the ocean. The surface of ocean, free from any waves, shows that the ocean is abiding very stably, peacefully, and by this we can understand that in the process of Mahamudra Samatha, when no thoughts are occurring, our <coughs> resting and abiding is very stable. <coughs> The same point is perfectly expressed in the wishing prayer for the realization of Mahamudra composed by the third Kamapa Rasundoji. And the related verse informs us that <coughs> the coarse thoughts, the subtle thoughts, waves, subside right at their own place, collapse within themselves. The subtle thoughts are those very difficult to identify, thoughts like an undergoing stream of underlying stream of, con of, of thinking process that is very difficult to recognize. 
the false thoughts are those that really obviously are plaguing us as the, the whole turmoil of our afflicted states of mind, passion and so on. So they are very obvious and clear. And both of them, equally, the false and the subtle thoughts are like waves. The same way they rise, they subside, rise at their own place, collapse in themselves and subside back into the surface of the ocean like waves. <coughs> now, when those thoughts, as the huge and the tiny waves, are not present, the surface of the ocean is undisturbed. And so the next line of this verse of Mahamudra, Freya says, then the rest within the state of that ocean of the mind unmoving. Unmoved, there's no disturbance going on, so it's peacefully abiding <coughs> without any waves. <laughs> No now, then the third line informs us about additional risks of the exercise. So, once the mind abides, there are still two mistakes that can happen. One is the agitation of mind, and one is the drowsiness, the sleepiness that finally ends up into sleep. And the third line of prayer says then, free from the defects of being agitated or being drowsy and sleepy, may, the fourth line, may my peaceful abiding, um, the ocean of peaceful abiding may be unmoved and stable. So there's one nice example that shows this very clearly from the encounter of Miller Ripa with one of his female students. Which is a very famous one appearing in his life story, is the Dharma Lady Padabon. And she asks Milarepa, please tell me how to do this meditation. How exactly shall I abide? And he taught her by means of four examples and five meanings. <coughs> First example, he taught her to say, look down at the surface of the ocean, as the ocean is free of waves. This is the way you should abide. And an ocean free of waves, obviously, is very stable and is very peaceful. Okay. 
बारह तो चावा तावे से गांव दूँ अब वो लोग ना तेरे बीच में ऐसे काम है लोग माता नो लोग तब में कोई और नहीं है राजा फिर नौ नौ ये मत हाँ मैं बात है फिर संन्यास पर जंतु तावे का तीन महीने से नहीं काम so as we are trying to train ourselves and resting like the surface of ocean free of waves, it's good to use some techniques. And generally speaking, for peaceful abiding, there are two types of methods. The one is using a point of reference as a focus of concentration. And the second type is being totally free of any point of reference. So, Within focus of point of reference, there are various different types, and one could be to focus on one's own breath. Well, as we do that, and as we suggest, then slowly by being one point of the focus on the stream of our breathing in and out, we could arrive at a state where no thought is occurring anymore, and then we have reached that real peaceful abiding like the ocean free of waves. Let's do it. The peaceful abiding focusing on our breath. <laughs>
<laughs> For the full length of five minutes, we have been trying to concentrate on the screen of our in and out breath. So, time again to relax. <laughs> <laughs> After having tried for five minutes to sit straight and unmoving, it's very helpful to take a break and to bend on three all directions. <coughs> Now, we have been trying to peacefully abide for five minutes. You might wonder what's this whole thing good for? And she says, peaceful abiding is of great benefit. Why? Because normally we entertain so many thoughts at all times that by the power of this turmoil of thinking, we blur the understanding, the recognition of pure mind itself. And when we manage to pacify this intense process of thinking by the power of peaceful abiding, it is much easier to see that mind itself, awareness itself, really is. <coughs> Entering the process of peaceful abiding, we have to see that there are different steps, the so-called abiding, the first abiding, the second abiding, and the third abiding, indicating that the process becomes increasingly more peaceful. <laughs> Now, the first step of peaceful abiding has its indication, and we know this process happening by that we start to worry because we have so many thoughts suddenly. We think, oh dear, now I start, started to rest peacefully and I get so many thoughts. What's going wrong? But in fact, it is only that we become aware of that our mind is constantly engaged in such an intensity of thoughts that they are compared, and the classical example is that, with the, the, the waterfall that just shoots down from a cliff into the valley. And when we look closer, then this water that shoots down the cliff is the intensity of movement of water. It's full of many waves. It's a whole turmoil of water. And so we become aware of that now. It's not that we produce more thoughts, but we become aware of what's actually going on in our mind. <laughs> I'm 
So now the <coughs> second stage of peaceful abiding is compared to a river stream that slowly in a slow pace flows without many waves. So once the water has reached the plains that it's increasing in volume and just peacefully flows. In the same way, by habituating ourselves with a peaceful abiding, here we have reached a stage where the whole tunnel of thoughts, process of thinking, has been pacified. And there are not so many thoughts anymore, and it's like this peacefully, the peaceful flow of the stream of a river. <laughs> The last stage of this process of familiarizing oneself with peaceful abiding is likely to be the ocean free of waves. And here, our ability to rest without the agitation of thoughts is of such stability that throughout the whole session we are able to maintain that peaceful abiding without any interruption by thoughts. If we say like from 5 to 6 we want to sit, <coughs> enter this process and it is one peaceful abiding from the beginning to the end and no one thought is happening. This is like the surface of ocean uneducated by waves. <coughs> Now, as uh, dependent on our body disposition, it is well possible that by the particular way our breathing works, that in the initial process of peaceful abiding, we hear sounds in our ears and so on. This is not very important, but uh, we should know also that when we really stabilize our mind, the higher advanced stages of peaceful abiding, one obtains the worldly city, the worldly power to see long distance and to hear far away things, and to smell far away things. This is part of the, the worldly powers that we achieve by the mere stability and tranquility of mind. <coughs> 